ahead of time mm -hmm. after they've died. A lot of the same steps are taken. The primary difference has to do with, with, with procedurally when are the steps taken and how quickly they can be taken. In a probate administration, just to give you a little timeline, California has the most complicated probate administration process in the country. There's some states where someone dies, you can file for probate and be done with it in a month. A month, okay, like boom, A to Z, you're done, everything's distributed, people go on with their lives. So that's kind of from an estate planning standpoint, that's the functional equivalent of, we're gonna just rip that Band-Aid right off and let it go. In California, they're gonna slowly tear the Band-Aid off over months. So people get to experience the joy and the pain for months, waiting until the court finally says, you can distribute everything to the people who may have been desperately needing that money for the last several months. But they're, they're stuck. Here in California, to commence a probate, and now in this, this time we're dealing with, with the coronavirus, um, probates now, um, all uh, pretty much the courts here in Santa Clara County and in San Mateo County, where I also practice um, in the probate courts there, uh, everything has to be filed electronically. It used to be you could walk down with your papers, stand in line, talk to a clerk, get a court date, earliest available court date, fill it out on the papers, file the papers, walk out, and then you know, okay, I've got my court date in two months. Now, you can't, and that was the beauty. I could actually, even better, I could actually call the court, talk with the clerk at the time, Manny, who always called me Attorney Bergman. You can probably guess where Manny was from originally. Uh, just because he addressed me as attorney all the time, um, it's an it's an honorific. <laughs> but uh, I would ask Manny. I'd say, Manny, I'm getting ready to start a new probate. What's the earliest date? And he'd tell me the date. I'd fill it out on my paperwork, and uh, he'd reserve me on the court calendar. It's like making a reservation at a restaurant. Well, you're right. reserved on on May 25th at nine o'clock a.m. in Department 10. I said, thank you, Manny. Then I'd finish my paperwork, which might be a couple weeks to gather information, put it together, and then I would file it and file the notice of hearing and tell everybody who's entitled to come. Uh, that would save time. Now I can't file for probate until every piece of paperwork is completed and ready to be filed. And then I can get a court date. So right now the process of going to e-filing has actually made the probate process longer and more complicated than it was before. That's what's ironic here in Santa Clara County. Uh, it's mm -hmm. actually now a longer process and more complicated by going to the simplicity of electronic filing. So now I have to file the paperwork. I can request, please set the earliest date possible and then, and then they electronically email back to me the filed paperwork and they've stamped the date on there. So now I know when my hearing date is. Um, I can also tell them don't pick anything this week because that's when I'm in Disneyland. Hopefully that will come back <laughs> and we'll be going to Disneyland again. But it's gonna take two and a half months, maybe three months to get into court here. So now we have someone passes away, the family comes in, I typically tell them, you know, concentrate on burying your parent now. Right. Concentrate on that. I could start working here in the background, but concentrate on that. Then we do the paperwork, the paperwork get together. That's a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks. Then we file the paperwork. Now we have a hearing. The hearing is just to put somebody in charge of the estate just to start the probate, we're now probably three, three and a half months after the person has died, just to get it started. Other states, we're done, we're done. Everyone moved on with their lives. They can move on with the grieving process without having the financial side hanging over their heads. 
but here in California, we just got started. But it gets better. Let's assume that someone died and they literally had no creditors of any kind. I mean, you know, no credit cards, house paid off, uh, they didn't owe anybody anything, and, uh, and they know that. There, there's no bills whatsoever. The law here in California requires a four month period after the probate commences for creditors to file their claims. Even if you know there are no creditors, you have to wait for four months just in case, oh, uh, grandma's uh, gambling debt from Vegas shows up out of nowhere. You, you know, and so that is mandatory, it's statutory, you have no choice. Right. After that period, then you can file for a final hearing. In the probate, by the way, you also have to do an inventory of everything the person owned, certain assets, real estate, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, retirement plans have to be valued by a court appointed appraiser called the probate referee who charges an appraisal fee. Basically a 10th of a percent of the value is the appraisal fee. Uh, bank accounts can be valued by the, the executor or the personal representative appointed. I mean, if you have a will, the person's called an executor. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a will, they're called an administrator. Um, same job, different title. <laughs> I don't know why it's a historical, um, why they, they say you administer a state if there's no will, but you're the executor of an estate if there is a will. 